What is up guys and welcome to the Casual Wrestling Show, the number one wrestling show meant specifically for casual wrestling fans. Each and every week, I, the Notorious Nerdy D, topple the biggest questions in pro wrestling alongside my better half, Level Up Lauren. What's up, y'all? You can find the show every Wednesday night on YouTube and on your favorite podcast network. If you enjoy the content, make sure to join the Casual Community Discord group. The link is in the description of this video. And make sure to hit the pretty little like button on this video, Lauren. Let's jump right into some wrestling talk. So we're coming out of Afternoon of Champions. Uh Uh-huh. Because they called it Night of Champions. Yeah. But for us, that's a one o'clock show. And that's that's my least favorite part about uh, premium live events that are overseas, that are, yeah. that are across the pond. They, the, the timing, it, it doesn't work for me. Uh, so like when they watch it, though, it's at those weird times, right? No, it's it's at a better time for the... I, well, I, maybe in the... I'm not sure how it works. I know a lot of times with UFC, there was a funny time. They have to somehow schedule it where it hits kind of a convenient time for everybody involved. Yeah. So I don't know how they settle on one o'clock, but they typically, you know, one o'clock is where they settle. And to me, it's hard for me to digest three hours of, of wrestling on a Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. That's rough. It's hard to do. So we ended up, I watched like the first hour from home. We yeah. went, we went and ate lunch. We watched the second hour while we were eating while we were eating and then we waited and watched the third hour mm-hmm. just kind of on our own time so i don't i don't love I, it takes away from that kind of community dynamic where like when we watch the nighttime premium live events and the whole discord kind of watches together yeah that's the most fun when they do this i like the crowds internationally mm-hmm. but i don't like the one o'clock start time to me yeah it, it just it throws me off but we got we definitely got some big moments coming out of Night of Champions. We got the bloodline finally. I know that was crazy. And falling apart. And so when I sat down to kind of write out the topics for this week, I was struggling because there's a lot to talk about, but there's not really a lot to talk about because we've we've kind of been heading down this path and we've known this was coming and we've 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 talked about it from every angle. What's gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? And it finally happened and it, it, it was I, I would say it was perfect the way they played it out. I think it hit perfectly, but now we kind of are left in this void of like, well, well how do we discuss it now? Because now we we're right outside of money in the bank heading into SummerSlam. I think that's too soon for anything really big to happen mm-hmm. with the bloodline. So if we're, if we're going to map this thing out, I think at this point we've made it this far. I think this story plays out all the way through WrestleMania, Philadelphia. I could see that. I, I just, I mean, I don't think I, they can't rush think it. It'll just be point. like a slow build. So for topic number one, I wanted to, try to map out what we think is is kind of the 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 storyline going through WrestleMania of next year. Here here's my big issue. In in researching for this topic, we don't know the premium live event schedule for the rest of 2023. There's a lot of holes that still exist where typically mid-year we've been told these are the events you're getting in the back half of the year. Mm-hmm. Right now, if you look at it, we know Money in the Bank. Yeah. That's next. Then we know SummerSlam. True. After that, it's a, it's a little bit of a coin toss. I, th- I think we assume and know we're going to get another Crown Jewel. Yeah. And we assume and probably know we're going to get another Survivor Series. But outside of that, there's two to three blank spots where premium live events can and should fit in Mm -hmm. and we just have no clue what those are and i think that's odd at this point in time you're gonna be like surprise well i I, you know i I, it leads back to this idea do they just not know what they want to do is it so open right now that they're going what do we fill these blanks in with is it they're just not ready to say there's so many possibilities i i think it's a mixture of all of the above i think they know where the stories are going but they don't necessarily know the beats and where they're going to hit to to kind of fill in the blanks of, of of where we're headed but let's let's play pretend okay let's use last year's 
uh, schedule, which mm-hmm. would be Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, Clash at blank, right? It's I probably kept not on jumping in my mind. Well, it's probably not going to be Clash crazy. at the Castle again, but it'll probably. I, I I've seen rumors they were talking about another uh, premium live event in India could be Clash at the Palace, right? It could you simply could could just fill that in with something else. So let's pretend we've got Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, Clash at whatever. Mm-hmm some form of like extreme rules crown jewel and survivor series right so we got six premium live events to fill out the year for the bloodline here's what i'm assuming is going to happen probably as soon as this friday rikishi tweeted out something to the the extent of like it's time for me to step in rikishi's their daddy right uh the 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 Usos. usos yes in real life yes okay so in part of the bloodline and an and, and, and elder in the bloodline. So it seems to me, at least for the time being, that Rikishi is going to show up and I'm going to assume he's going to patch things up. Mm-hmm. The bloodline is not done. I think we all thought that's the implosion of the blood. I don't think that's the big finale. I think that Rikishi shows up. I think that he's going to you know like when you drop a vase and you break it and all the pieces he's gonna try and glue it back together the best he can it's gonna look like a piece of shit but that's rikishi's gonna mold the bloodline back together so i think through money in the bank we get this idea that the bloodline okay we've mended fences roman quote unquote forgives the usos for what they've done even though like and you can tell there'll be disdain he doesn't really yeah, but you know, what I mean, for 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 all intents and purposes, it'll look like the bloodline fractured is still together. So, Money in the Bank. What I love to happen is I would love for Jay Uso to win Money in the Bank. At That'd this point, cool. I've changed off of L.A. Knight, who I think is entertaining, most entertaining, maybe most deserving of, of the Money in the Bank. But I just when I start to look at what's compelling, I think Jay Uso holding that money in the bank briefcase becomes this just huge you know mark on on roman reigns where he has to look over his shoulder at all times knowing that the usos have already turned on him once knowing that that jay uso has the money in the bank now i've seen people say solo should win I'm just not ready for Solo to win Money in the Bank. I think I like Jey Uso. I like the dynamics of the brothers, Usos, and and Roman and Solo kind of splitting apart. And at some point leading to that, I've seen people go, whoa, we're going to get two on two at Money in the Bank. Roman and Solo versus the Usos. I don't, I I think that's too fast. I have two questions. Uh Uh-huh. Number one, is Roman Reigns, like father or whatever, is he a wrestler? And does he have anybody of significance? I don't know. I, I don't know right off the top of my head. Okay. I can't. So then number two, uh, do you think that Solo is ready for like something that big like Money in the Bank? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it works with Solo. I think there's there's no doubt in my mind that they can go the Solo direction, have Solo win Money in the Bank, and and the, the story beats still kind of play out the same. I just like the dynamic better if it's Jey Uso. But I think they're interchangeable. Okay. I like that Money in the Bank. Almost what I felt like they should have done last year was Sammy winning the Money in the Bank and mm-hmm. being the thorn in Roman's side. I think you've waited. Now let's go Jey Uso winning the Money in the Bank and being this, this thorn that every time something happens to Roman, he immediately has to look to make sure that Jey Uso is not cashing in on him behind his back. True. And and I I like this idea. I think that you you can lead. So so if you map it out, that means money in the bank, the big bloodline part of that story is Jey Uso winning money in the bank. That means Roman doesn't really need to be a part of it. Solo could be there in support, but however you get it done, Jey Uso wins money in the bank. That leads us to SummerSlam, where you assume Roman Reigns is going to wrestle. Yeah. This could be the perfect first time to tease Jey Uso cashing in. You have Roman fight whoever. I don't care who it is at this point. Give him an opponent. Make it someone dangerous enough. Make it someone who almost beats Roman. Roman's very beat down at the end of the match. And we cut to Jey Uso looking like he's contemplating cashing in, but he doesn't cash in. Yeah. So then we move past that to clash at whatever. 
I think it clashed at whatever. You can begin to splinter the bloodline a little bit, however you want to. But I think ultimately what this should lead to is at uh, Crown Jewel, a match between, by then they should have splintered and broken up, a match between Solo and Roman and the Usos, two-on-two, fighting, which then should lead to Survivor Series, a bloodline versus bloodline. Now, if you need to bring in outside people, the, there's there's like another who? brother exist. If oh, there's another Uso brother. Yeah, so whoever you can get to kind of align themselves within this bloodline versus bloodline. Is I he think, younger than Uso? Than um, what's I called? believe so. Yeah, I think he's in like MLW or he's in one of the other wrestling. But okay. there there is another brother, so you could essentially find enough people to fill out these these bloodline rosters and go bloodline versus bloodline. Which then could lead to, uh, you know, if if you go that direction, then I think the bloodline stays out of the Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. and and I think at WrestleMania, what I would do, the way I book WrestleMania to make this make sense is is who dethrones Roman Reigns. Everybody's been saying the Rock, right? There's the everybody. It's the Rock. It's the Rock. I love that, but I don't want the Rock to dethrone him. I just want the Rock to have the match. I want for Roman. And The Rock to meet up at WrestleMania. Maybe The Rock wins the Royal Rumble. Rock wins the Royal Rumble. It's Roman versus The Rock at yeah. WrestleMania. Roman beats The Rock. And then Jay cashes in after that match with the help of The Rock to dethrone Roman Reigns. I think at that point, Roman should be kind of maniacal and eager, like. He, at that point, he should have kind of turned on Solo, yeah. turned on the Usos, turned on the rest of the Bloodline. I think that there should be like this almost mafia type finale of like, like I'm the boss. Well, just everybody hitting finishers on Roman Reign, right? Got you. So it's a Samoan spike. It's a you know an Uso finisher, Uso finisher. If Rikishi's there, Rikishi hits it. The Rock hits a rock bottom. Maybe you bring Sammy and and Kevin out, and they and it's just this like epic. Roman being ping ponged back and forth, ultimately going down, Jay cashing in, winning, and, yeah. and that being the culmination of this like three year story. But that that's the only way I I really see that this can kind of come to be, and you really get everything out of it that you want. Because if if you look at this now, as far as we've come, and as 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 intricate as they've played this story out, as far as Sammy and then getting Sammy out. Uh, the Usos turning on Roman, mm-hmm. there, there has to be enough left to get us to WrestleMania. This can't end, number one, at SummerSlam. It can't end randomly in, in the fall on, on some random premium live event. So it's got to go to WrestleMania. And when you start talking about it's not Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes isn't the guy to to dethrone Roman Reigns. I think we've established that Cody is is ultimately going, I think, to end up wrestling Seth Rollins at WrestleMania for the world heavyweight championship. Mm -hmm. And WWE is going to do their best to convince us that that's what Cody wanted all along was, was just a world title. I think that there's only two choices to dethrone Roman Reigns at this point. It's solo Sokoa or it's Jey Uso. And, And my money is going for Jey Uso. Uh, so topic number two today I want to talk about here is I, a couple different people have popped up on Twitter. Uh, it's, it's funny. You get to around SummerSlam time, which is, you know, it's early enough to start throwing your hat in for, for next year's WrestleMania. Guys start popping up and, and, and throwing out ideas, and Hulk Hogan popped up. Hulk Hogan popped up in an interview and said that he never got his retirement match. And okay. He thinks he needs one more match. Now I, I'm not positive. Is that true? I, I believe. I don't think he got an official farewell uh, retirement match. Yeah. But I, how old is Hulk Hogan first? Seventy-two. Though? You just you just throwing. I it did up, make bro. that number. So up. I don't. I but I don't know exactly. But but he, I'll tell you what. He's too old to be wrestling. And so Hulk Hogan came out and said that he wants to wrestle Stone Cold Steve Austin. He said that that he thinks a 69 uh, 69 years old. 69. That sounds very appropriate. I was very That's close Very though. appropriate for Hulk Hogan to be 69 years old. But but Hulk Hogan comes out and says he wants to wrestle against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay. Which is another guy Stone Cold, I don't know what Stone Cold's age is, but in wrestling years and and the way his body moves, he's 70 something. 
He's you know 58. I mean? But 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 his body is stiff. He has been yeah. beat. he's been he is miles and miles put on his body. And so I who do they think the audience is this for this? What it, like when Hulk Hogan speaks this into existence, and this is a very Hulk Hogan thing to do, to just stir up the pot. Yeah. But who does he really think the audience is for Hulk Hogan versus Stone Cold? The, I get it. The poster sells tickets. Yeah. But you once they get in the ring and they have to perform, it, there's zero chance, zero percent chance that gets remembered any other way than just complete horseshit. Yeah, because I mean, like, how are they going to move? They're, they're just you know? not. Neither one of them, like, neither one of them can can go long enough or fast enough to put on a match that people want to the see Stone long term. Cold Kevin Owens one to me was amazing, but I felt like But it was carried by Kevin Owens. It, I don't know that Kevin Owens will ever get the appreciation that he deserves yeah. for what he did for Stone Cold. Mm-hmm. Number 1, he carried the promotion all the way to WrestleMania, and number 2, he I mean Stone Cold, don't get me wrong. He he showed out and and when I didn't think he could yeah. But, but Hulk Hogan is not Kevin Owens. He cannot do or carry a match that way. So what, mm-hmm. what Hulk Hogan's got to stick to is like one leg drop, right? Come out, <laughs> do his little, you know, his little thing, say the wrong city that he's in. Oh, that and, was so and crazy. And then do a leg drop on somebody. That That's where Hulk Hogan has to go. The other person who popped up was Ryback. Ryback is back. Okay. And, and Ryback seems to do this thing where he disappears for a minute, then he comes back, and, and he likes to get on the internet, and he likes to stir the pot and talk his shit. But Ryback came out and, and basically you know, tweeted at Tony Khan that he wants a match on AEW Collision against Goldberg. Okay. This is a no, number one. Here's my first problem. Fucking Goldberg. Well, CM Punk and, and Goldberg, I mean, and, and Ryback have a horrible history together. CM Punk claims that Ryback uh, purposely tried to hurt him numerous times. Yeah. So you really think that Tony Khan, the stress level that Tony Khan has to go through just with CM Punk and the elite. (laughs) Now you're talking about taking the show that you've custom built for CM Punk, which they announced him earlier today. He's first. I saw that going to be there. So you're going to take that show and add another person personality that that's, that's unlikable that CM Punk doesn't like and have him, wrestle against Goldberg for what stupid I don't like I don't know (laughs) who they think the audience for these matches for I don't know if there's a real delusion by Hulk Hogan and Ryback that they believe that they're gonna move tickets on let me back that up because I think think Hulk Hogan will move tickets I don't think Ryback and Goldberg necessarily move tickets Hulk Hogan Stone Cold moves tickets absolutely disappoints Ryback hasn't wrestled in what 10 years or something what has like he that been doing I, getting ready for a wrestling match <laughs> complaining about how wwe screwed him out of wrestling or something like that yeah i don't i don't know what they think the audience is for them or if they really think there's a calling for either one of them so do you think it's an ego thing or do you think that it's like a yeah. addiction to the attention? no i think i think well so i think it's a they're both shit stirrers Okay. When, when they're when the world's too quiet around them for too long, I think they've got to say something to even if it's negative attention. They just mm-hmm. want people talking about them. So I think that's. I mean, one. we're talking about them right now. Exactly. So. But number two, I think that there is there is this level of narcissism that exists in some of these guys where they go, "I could do one more match." I think they see people like Sting and Ric Flair, and and they they get a well, little. Did Ric Flair like pass out? Exactly. Or that's why. That's why I don't want to see Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold. Right. What we, happens? One of them dies. We we talked about this last week, right? We talked about if there was a percentage meter over the top of people's heads in a re- uh, wrestling match that said the percentage of how close they are to being injured. Mm-hmm. The match with Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold. Starts off with each guy at eighty percent, and One's it only gonna blow out a knee. Yeah, it only gets closer to a hundred. It's not like that moves down. Both guys start with an extreme risk of of getting hurt, and so the question I ask is: If you're Hulk Hogan, if you're Ryback, if you're Goldberg, Goldberg does this a little bit. So I'm not going to throw Goldberg into this conversation, but I am going to throw Hulk Hogan into this conversation, and I'm going to throw Ryback in. If you want to come back, if you want to wrestle again, if you need a big hoorah, why not use your name to put somebody else over? A younger cat, 
a younger kid who's coming up who needs that big victory over a big name that they can use. If you're, what did you say, 70? 69, 69 and 58. If you're 69 years old, you don't need another win. No. You had all the wins that you needed in your lifetime. It's time for you to come out, get your retirement match, and have someone have have somebody go over that if could you use lose, it. it doesn't do anything to your I'm gonna legacy. Tell you, well, I'm going to tell in you. In my so opinion, but I mean. Let's no. talk about Trish Stratus. Yeah. Because initially when Trish and Lita came back, if you remember, I was very critical and said, why aren't we jumping on them the same way we jump on all these old guys who come back and take a spot from young people, mm -hmm. right? And we, you know, I think they got a little bit of a pass, but here we go. Fast forward a month or two. And what is Trish Stratus doing? She's putting over Zoe Stark. Mm-hmm. She's using this platform that she has to absolutely turn the spotlights onto a, a wrestler who is more green, who needs that rub, and, and it's working out I perfectly. Agree. It immediately we made NXT and I was like, I don't like Zoe Stark. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Then she came out with her and I was like, Oh, I really like her. And and this so this immediately makes Zoe Stark seem relevant, mm -hmm. and 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 that is the formula that these older wrestlers who want to come look and and Trish is having a good run. Mm -hmm. She got to beat Becky Lynch. She's getting to to cut promos she's on a regular really good. basis. Like yeah, was she like that when she wrestled? She's always been extremely good. I mean, she, there's most a I lot. I wish I would have been a, a lot of people fan consider her the greatest woman of all time. So so yeah, it's not like it's unbelievable to and and. She kind of went away from wrestling. So to come back and pick up the way she has, I think that's the most impressive and her skills part. skills are definitely still there. So yeah. Awesome. Are there enough for somebody her age that the gap is not that wide? Yeah. Between, you know, that's there are like, some. She performs like, well. If you her. watch the, the Becky Lynch match with, with Trish and Becky, there are mistakes. She makes mistakes. But you have to expect that from somebody who's been gone that long. Yeah. But, but that leads me to like Hulk Hogan. Someone like Hulk Hogan, L.A. Knight. I know we throw L.A. Knight all the time, but could you imagine L.A. Knight versus Hulk Hogan at SummerSlam or at WrestleMania, the buildup, the promos, the shit talking. L.A. Knight can play the heel. Hulk Hogan can play the hero. He was Hollywood Hulk Hogan, right? That was in his NWO days. Versus L.A. Knight. Then there's Hulkamania. Okay. But yes, you could do the Hollywood Hulk Hogan. You do whatever persona you want to do. But you have these two sparks fly it would be magical and then I'm in the end you have la knight go over for the win and he gets the rub and he gets to be the guy who retired hulk hogan hulk hogan gets his retirement match la knight gets the benefit of being a part of that situation especially after having to go through the whole bray wyatt bullshit mm -hmm. like la knights do something something big like that but yeah outside of that kind of match outside of a, a retirement match that puts somebody else over all i want to see hulk hogan do is is like i said come out do his little hand signals get the crowd worked up yell the wrong city and and do one leg drop that's all he needs to do i don't want to see 10 to 30 minutes of Hulk Hogan in a ring at 69 <laughs> years old. It's just, it's not what I want to do. It's not. I mean. Come on now, Grandpa. Let's be honest. Wait, I how mean, old is Sting? He's old too. But let's be honest. Like Hulk Hogan did a bunch of racist shit. You want to make up for your for the racist piece of shit you are? Go out to Crown Jewel this year and let Omos smash you. Dude. Let him Let Omos have a squash match. Sting is 71 years yes, old. Yes, Sting is an old motherfucker. He's an anomaly though. But the oh problem is God. Sting gives everybody else hope, but Sting is is the exception to the fucking rule. He's not the rule. Mm -hmm. Like Sting is keeping his body in tremendous shape and doing things that nobody at that age should be doing. Fuck yeah. Sting is in better physical shape than most 40-year-old men. Yeah. So I mean, so that is an anomaly. Don't Hulk Hogan and these guys can't get it twisted. They're not Sting. There's only one sting. There's not these guys 65 and up. You just, you don't need a full on wrestling match, especially not at WrestleMania, especially not in WWE. At least Rick fair, Rick flair rode off and did his own little sideshow circus event. Uh, yeah, that was, crazy. you know, which, which, which was cool, right? That's a sideshow thing. But what I don't need in WWE is I don't need a, a 60 year old man wrestling so vince mcmahon is 77 
Yeah. When he wrestled that last time, how old was he? Like 75? Remember when he took his shirt off? He and didn't really wrestle, though. Yeah, That's but still, what but do you remember him moving, though? Yeah, like, but do you remember how he took that stunner yes. and he couldn't fall? Like, yes. That's what happens at that age is you're no longer that's able. That's what I imagine yeah. when you say this. Well, that's But that's what Hulk Hogan would be. He can't take a stunner. He yeah. can't fall and gyrate on the I ground. I was going to so, die at one point just saying. Like, yeah, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about, but that's just, that's exactly right. When you get in your 70s your body does you can't fall to your knees like bones no. will break your hip will break things things begin to fall <laughs> apart especially when you've been a wrestler your entire life all right topic number three here is a question that i wanted to pose to everybody who listens to this show and, and that is after night of champions seth rollins won the new world heavyweight title and immediately on Monday Night Raw after, they, they do the thing where AJ Styles comes out, congratulates him, and uh, they get a tag team match against the Judgment Day. But, but within all that, uh, can Seth Rollins make the world heavyweight title feel like a top-level championship and not just a secondary belt to Roman Reigns' Universal World Championship? I'll start by saying the belt looks phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The size is right. It's a big, you know, chunky boy belt. It looks good. It looks it looked phenomenal on Seth Rollins when he won it. It looked phenomenal on Monday night when he wore it to the ring. He came out from the crowd. I thought everything was right. I think there is something though. There's something to Seth Rollins that bugs me a little bit. And a lot of people don't seem to share this opinion with me, but it's just something that bugs me. Seth Rollins teeters on this level of like genius like kanye west mm -hmm. and then complete fucking goofball who like maybe steps one step farther than you should okay what do you mean the outfits and things like like some of that it's a little bit it, it's odd to me like I, and I get he kind of plays babyface, he kind of plays heel. He's he's all over. He, he's this like anomaly of a character, but it it does wear a little bit on me. The the goofy out. I don't know. Maybe it's the goofy outfits. I don't love. Well, maybe him and like Becky sit and like come up with all these ideas. Because I mean, her outfits are crazy that's too. Fine. So and that works. It worked when Seth was playing kind of the Joker, but now he's a world champion. And I hate when people do this, so I'm absolutely hating what I'm saying right now. But it is the way I'm feeling: is you got to change when you become champion. You probably don't. You know, Seth's doing what he does. It's just I don't know what it is. Something about it fucking bugs me. Okay. It's it's just like the over the top outfits, the the over the top laugh. I just feel like at, at, like this this title. I like it. This title needs legitimacy early on mm -hmm. and if it becomes this kind of joke of a thing okay i could i could I see what you're it, saying it, with it, that it, i don't know it's just it's just a feeling i have and i don't i can't really explain it that well but i i guess here's here's what i'll equate it to so you remember the last six months it's not like this is a new concept seth rollins was the United States champion when they were trying to make the United States champion this belt. Yeah. There was a time where they thought we don't need to make a new belt. We're going to take the United States championship and we're going to elevate it and make it feel like a main title. It should be equal to the, the, the universal championship on the other brand. And Seth Rollins was the guy spearheading that movement and I don't think he ever accomplished what WWE was trying to do. Now, the argument can be made, was that Seth Rollins? Was that Theory? Was that Bobby Lashley? Or was it the fact that people are just stubborn and we know the United States Championship is a mid-card title and you're not going to convince us otherwise? Personally, uh -huh. I, I think it's that. I mean, when, you, when, you're, like, when you're conditioned to think something is something for so long, it takes you a long time or something crazy to change it. Okay, but let me propose a, a separate thought line then. If Brock Lesnar was holding the United States Championship Ooh, no. and Brock Lesnar was defending it on a nightly basis, do you, do you continue that same line of thought? Or does Brock Lesnar immediately elevate a title to another level and you go, if Brock wants that belt, that belt means something, yeah. right? So this is this if is my man Brock does. So this is the argument good. I make for 
Seth Rollins is for as good as Seth Rollins is, and he might be the best in pro wrestling right now. The persona doesn't necessarily elevate the title to the level that you want that title. And, and, and I know it's kind of a cop out, but I do think there's a part of me that thinks Brock Lesnar would have been the best first world heavyweight champion. I think so. That just putting a title on a guy who's actually won a UFC yeah. title, there's just something about the like stigma to that. power maybe or like. And there's something to me about seeing the guy coming out wearing fucking ruffled sleeves <laughs> that makes me go, all right, so now there's three tiers of belts. Yeah. There's Intercontinental United States Championship. This is just a step above those. And then you still have Roman Reigns, right? Yeah. It felt like to me that, and I don't know, like I can't put, I, I could probably sit down and think about this. I haven't thought about it, but there's just something to me that says like, I don't know if Seth elevates this belt if he holds it long term. I, 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 I think Seth is bigger than the belt. That's what it is. Seth Rollins is a bigger personality than the belt. And I don't think this belt needs that at this point. This belt needs to be the big feature. I think Bobby Lashley is somebody who can do that. The person that. needs to build the belt. Yes, I think Drew McIntyre is somebody who could do that. Oh, I think you need cool. a where big, he? strong. He in contract disputes. It looks like mm. it looks like he may where, not. Where does he again. plan to go then? That's a whole different topic. Right? Is is yeah? I mean, I've I've said that is he's not going to AEW. He's too big. But but yeah, so he, so then let's go let's move forward. Let's let's go off of them. Okay. Let's talk about Seth Rollins. Let's talk about if they're going to run with Seth Rollins, who's first? Who's first to fight Seth Rollins for that belt and make it feel? Remember, the the first couple months of this belt are going to be very very important. That these matches are going to need to feel like big world heavyweight championship matches. So who's first? Bobby Lashley. He's on the wrong brand. Bobby Lashley SmackDown now. But, I mean, they're not just going to bring somebody over? Well, they over. made that comment this last week about, like, AJ Styles, and well, I know we're not doing the mixing brands anymore, so I don't think it's that. So, I don't, you know, I think that the odds-on favorite at first was going to be somebody from the Judgment Day, but you book them both to lose to Seth Rollins and AJ Styles, which I think is absolute dog shit booking. I think that the Judgment Day should have won, and it should have been Damian Priest challenging for the world heavyweight championship we didn't get that so that's not yeah. what we're getting so who is it who on the monday night raw roster is it brock lesnar you think you can take well, it from seemingly him? it looks like brock lesnar's tied up with cody rhodes so i don't think that's happening so like it's a serious question that i'm asking who on monday night raw is worthy of challenging for that belt gunther but Gunther's closing in on being the longest ever intercontinental champion. So he's not losing that title. I think he's 100 days out. Not so likely. what's that? 100 days is three months, basically, three and a half months. Yeah. So he's so so for the next three and a half months. Inter, is that after SummerSlam, right? It's after SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's not. So what is it? Seth has to. De and Seth, ha that belt has to be defended at every premium live event. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot create another world championship belt and not have it defended. So who's money in the bank? I mean, it's, I have no idea. It's going to be Finn Balor or Damian priest, I think, but I don't think that's the right answer. Yeah. So, but, but that's what, so you got to like, if you're mapping it out, I don't see, I know this is kind of random, but then it seems like it's the little man belt. Cause that's well, just the first thing that popped saying. in my head. That's what I'm saying. And I know we get shit when we start talking about the little man, but Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins. Also, that's the match that you used. You already used that in the tournament. Oh, true. That was the match to go to Night of Champions. So you can't, I don't feel like you can keep dipping back into that bucket. Yeah. They're going to have to figure out a way to make just that belt. Leprechaun. <laughs> You're Jesus. Like, a leprechaun. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> All right, la the last question on this topic. Okay. How long should Seth Rollins be champion? I, don't know. I mean, like, so I think at least six months because do you want to just create it and all of a sudden he's I think like it needs gone? to bounce around. I think it needs to bounce around. Okay. I think that I get 
that there's this stigma with IWC that title, you know, these title reigns need to last. They need to be long title. But reigns. I guess then we get put in the same situation like we are with Roman Reigns, where it's like the same person has the belt for fucking exactly. ever. Well, let's talk about what I like to equate wrestling to is if they're trying to create a realistic fighting company, then you got to look at boxing and you got to look at UFC because those are the real fighting companies. Typically in UFC, guys don't hold the belt that long. You know, sometimes a guy, two fights after he wins it, he's done. He, he gets beat. How long are the fights, though? Like, until the next fight? In, in UFC? Yeah. Three to five months, typically. Okay. Right? So a guy fights two to three times a year. Okay. WWE, you fight more frequently. So you're frequently. saying, like, every premium event than like every like two premium events <laughs> i don't think it? i don't want a formula like i don't want to make it formulaic where like we know but i want that like i would like a belt and i think the world heavyweight championship should be that belt that every time it's fought for i don't feel like i know oh seth is, you know it's you too early in it. seth's run i'd like to see SummerSlam that belt get turned over and be like hey at any point in time, anybody can win this belt. I'd like to see a couple champions with the World Heavyweight Championship belt that are unexpected. L.A. Knight, Montez Ford, guys like that, even Austin Theory. And I know the argument's going to be made, well, that makes it a mid-card title. I, I think the problem is it's always going to be a step under the the world heavyweight or the the universal championship yeah so then use it effectively that way but if we go another if we go six months with seth rollins as champion mm -hmm. and we go eight months all the way to wrestlemania with roman reigns as champion that i just feel like the casual fan cannot keep up with that i think one of the most beautiful things they did at night of champions mm -hmm was Asuka beating Bianca Belair. Yeah, I did not see that coming at all. Wait, it, once now, what do we have? Bianca's in the right position. She has to chasing, fucking work for it again. Bianca chasing Asuka. Watch this. Watch the next three months. Bianca chasing Asuka or whatever happens with Bianca Belair, she will be extremely compelling again. Mm -hmm. Her stories will become extremely interesting. They, they can get away from the... She's overconfident. She's the champion. She always wins. I loved this unexpected. We, we I mean, we were sitting there saying on our predictions, uh -huh. there's no way. I agree. Bianca's yeah. safe. There's no way they keep talking about her mm -hmm. as the longest what reigning. So I love that they did that. I think that to me was one of the biggest, most pleasant surprises coming out of mm -hmm. uh, Night of Champions. Fourth topic I have to talk to you about, Lauren. All right. And this is an AEW topic, mandatory AEW okay. topic. And, and the AEW topics tend to be a little more generic because right now I can't, I haven't gotten back into watching, but I, I so, so I'm keeping an eye on AEW. I, I watch the news. I read the recaps. I'm just not watching the minute to minute action. And I watched the post, uh, press conference from the, the AEW pay-per-view event this past okay. uh, weekend. And MJF got up and, and did, he cut a little like uh, media promo where he basically said uh, that he doesn't want to wrestle all the time, that he likes showing up, you know, on, on this real unfrequent basis and, and defending his title because he's the best to ever do it. And he went on and he did his MJM, uh, MJF stick, which is good. I understand 100% what MJF is doing. I think I actually agree with what MJF is doing. I think for the character MJF, everything he's saying makes sense. But I absolutely think, and the question is, does MJF wrestle enough? Uh -huh. I absolutely think that he is a detriment to the AEW. I think that Tony Khan is allowing his wrestlers <laughs> to hurt the overall product of his company. And I actually think that this is going to lead to long-term ramifications for the, for AEW, not for MJF. I think MJF so comes out of this looking M good. MJF is the one saying, I don't want to wrestle. So he's doing kind of a Roman. I think he's defended the belt three times in the last like six months. Okay. That's kind of bullshit. And my thought has always been when you are the smaller company, when you're AEW, when you are competing with WWE and the big knock on WWE has been 
for the last two years that the belt stays on one guy. Yeah. He's a part-timer. He doesn't show up. I would think as a company, you would want to create the stark contrast and have your champion defending his belt once a month. We, I would have a fighting champion. I don't think it bodes well for AEW to have a champion who who is smug and, and arrogant, and I think they need a workers' champion. And MJF is a great champion. Mm -hmm. I just think that this title run is absolutely hurting the overall product. Well, we had kind of talked about this with basketball at one time, that like when the superstars aren't there, that it affects somebody's... I guess, perception of that. Like, if you're going to go pay, you want to see fucking MJF there. Well, and and that, that's not to say that MJF's not on the show. He's on the show, but but I think that in, in a company that is trying to compete with, you know, the big boys, I Have think... Have your superstars show up and, like, show out and fucking well, I think I think you want that belt... Def I think you want that belt defended as much as possible. I think you want to show front and center that that, that belt is being defended on a regular basis. I, I, I do understand. I get MJF and in the right circumstance, I think it makes sense. It makes sense for MJF's character to be smug, to say, you know, I wrestle when I want to wrestle. I, you gotta, you're going to have to find somebody worthy of wrestling me. But I also think that like it, it, it just overall, it, it, it hurts. It's harmful. He wrestles once every three months screams that he has the best matches but now you know, i think you kind of missed your opportunity when you look over at wwe the the argument now is that this world world heavyweight championship is going to counter everything else that's in wrestling and that belt should be defended once a month mm -hmm. I, I i feel like even if there's not a premium live event the world heavyweight championship has to be defended at least once a month and I think Seth Rollins alluded to, like, I'm a fighting champion. I will fight. Yeah. But here, so this is the bigger kicker that I think that most people aren't going to want to hear. This long title run for MJF, where he's fighting very infrequently, and he's, he's kind of establishing himself smugly as better than everybody else in, in AEW, I think that the longer that, that Tony Khan lets this go on, raises the probability and the likelihood that he jumps ship when his contract is up because what else is there for him to do? What do you really foresee MJF taking a step back once he loses the AEW world championship and going, now I'm going to wrestle every week. Now yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to up the frequency of what I do. MJF's treating himself like a big time superstar, mm -hmm. like a big time name. So I don't think he ever falls back in line. So I think that every month that he continues to be allowed to, to talk the way he talks and do the things he yeah. does and, and prolong these matches and, and, and basically fantasy book himself into these, these big time matches. I think like you start to look, he's done a four pillars match. You know, he wrestled all the four pillars. He he's wrestled Brian Danielson. He's starting to, to cross names off. He's wrestled CM Punk. And, and I think there's going to come a point in time right when his contract comes up that he's going to look around and go, Hey, this was great, but there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing else I can do in this company. You so I'm going to go play. Go to oh, 100. I think that I think that this title run, the way it's being timed out, Tony Khan is essentially just handing him everything he wants. You can wrestle when you want, wrestle who you want. We'll only give you these big, big, big name matches that that are you know high, uh, high marketed matches and. You'll look, he'll, he'll wrestle at Wembley. I don't know who he wrestles. I've heard rumors of like sting, but like after that, who, who is really left? And as we approach 2024, when, when apparently his contract is up, you really have to look at the landscape and go, what is there for MJF in, in AEW? Especially if he's not world champion, what, what does he do? True. All right, so the next thing I want to do, Lauren, is something that mm -hmm. was suggested by the Discord. I was asking them, uh, you know, last week I, I was going to start a thing where I uh, fix people's characters, but somebody suggested something I like better, and that is taking a random wrestler and booking them to the main event of WrestleMania. Okay. So before the show, I spun a wheel. I have a wheel with all the wrestlers on it. Uh huh. Spun a wheel, landed on Finn Balor. Okay. Okay, which is interesting. It's one I like. Yeah. So I'm going to explain to you how I would book Finn Balor 
to WrestleMania main event. And, and, and you know, stick with me. Okay? Okay, okay. So first off, let's talk Ready about Finn ring. Balor, right? Judgment Day. They, they're they a group to me that's kind of in peril. They're a group that has the potential to be, you know, major heels, but they have the potential to be complete duds based on the booking. So here's what I do. I immediately start by mapping my plan towards a main event of Dominic Mysterio versus Finn Balor for the okay. World Heavyweight Championship. And I'll explain to you how we get there. What happens is in the next couple of weeks, leading to Money in the Bank, Dominic Mysterio starts to take a little more prevalent role. He starts to kind of challenge Finn to be the leader of the Judgment Day. Uh-huh. And, and I think that at Money in the Bank, Finn Balor wrestles Seth Rollins. Okay. And I think in that match, there's an opportunity for Finn Balor to win the World Heavyweight Championship. But okay. Dominic Mysterio interferes, gets caught, disqualifies Finn Balor from winning the belt and cost him his chance at winning the World Heavyweight Championship. Okay? That same night, I think Dominic Mysterio should go on to win the Money in the Bank Championship. Okay? You with me? You staying I'm with here. me here? I'm here. All right. Thanks to maybe interference from like Damian and Rhea Ripley. Okay? okay. So then I have step two. Basically what happens is this leads to a confrontation between Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio. Okay. Finn starting to kind of show baby face. Like I want to win on my own. I'm tired of cheating. You guys, you know, the, the judgment day should be about being better than everybody. Not about cheating. Start. You start so to go. Finn there. is a champion. And no, Finn's not a champion. Oh, Finn loses because, because of Dominic of Dom. Mysterio. Okay. Now but Dominic Dom holds the money, the money in the bank. Okay. Um, so Finn confronts Dom intervenes. Uh, it leads to Finn walking out on the judgment day, not leaving, but just walking out. So. Uh, and you have a match at SummerSlam of Damian priest versus Finn Balor because Damian, uh, wants to basically show Finn. He can't just leave the judgment day, right? I, who wins that? It doesn't really matter. Next premium live event. You have Seth Rollins in a World Heavyweight Championship match against Damian Priest. Okay. Somehow Damian works himself into the World Heavyweight title pitcher. Damian beats down Seth Rollins to the point where he's about to win. Seth spins it around, wins the match. After the match, Damian's pissed off, gets up, fucks up Seth Rollins. Dom cashes in. Dom is your new World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. Okay, so now okay. Dom has the World Heavyweight Championship. Okay. And I think on a weekly basis, Dom comes out. You know, the crowd at this point hates Dom. Yeah. They're going to be booing and stuff. And I think that Dom defends this belt three or four times in between, you know, the end of the year. And every time he does, it's Rhea Ripley who wins, it for him. wins the match for him. But he's almost oblivious to what's happening. He thinks that he and did he starts it. to okay. believe. So then it's Survivor like Series. Okay. You have Judgment Day, mm -hmm. including Rhea Ripley in this match. This oh, gets real okay. in a match with men. So Judgment Day versus, and you add uh, some new people to Judgment Day while this is going. Okay. Uh, JD, whatever, the, the new Irish kid. Mm -hmm. you, you add them and you have a new Judgment Day, Judgment Day 2.0. And then you have Finn Balor put together a group of, you know, whatever, you know, maybe a new uh, Bullet Club. Uh -huh. With AJ Styles or whoever. And ultimately you get uh, Dominic, Team Dom. Judgment Day versus Finn's Finn Balor. And it's not Finn's Leprechauns. <laughs> it's not Finn's Leprechauns, right? Uh, then Finn Balor wins the Royal Rumble. Simple as that. Okay. And we go into WrestleMania, Finn Balor versus, versus Dominic, Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio. Okay. And what happens is, is in that time, Dominic begins to burn the bridges with Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest because he starts to buy into his own bullshit. Okay. And so when we get to... Uh, and WrestleMania, then, and Dom is looking for that interference. You get Damien walking out. The end of you Mommy get and Poppy. Rhea walking out. I think at that point, if you can sign Buddy Murphy, which is mm -hmm. Rhea Ripley's real boyfriend. Oh, shit. You have him come out and, like, you know. To listen, Poppy. Yeah. Daddy's here. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Buddy Murphy. <laughs> Buddy Murphy has a shirt that yeah. says Daddy's Home. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. I like. See, look yeah. at you sprinkling. But yeah, oh. ultimately, it ends with Finn Balor beating. Uh, nice. 
Dominic Mysterio at WrestleMania. That's how I book it. When I think that WWE makes sense. just going to realize they need to sign you as a writer, bro. It's it's not complicated. It's just playing in. It's it's they get too focused on this idea of like, see what that does is it it dislodges Seth Rollins, right? Because it mm-hmm. takes the belt off of him. But I would argue that Dominic Mysterio as world heavyweight champion in a compelling story against Finn Balor makes absolutely more sense. See, going I don't into just WrestleMania. love Finn Balor, but you made me kind of like interested in his story of how to it, get it there. It makes so exactly. It's the it's the plight of like of of using Dominic. That's how you effectively use a heel, a bad guy. Yeah. To to generate and love people genuinely for a baby hate face. him. So yes, like, and and as a world champion, people would despise him. Yeah. Because the, the the argument would be from people like me who overreact. He doesn't deserve this belt. He's Isn't not there ready a water for water bottle it. thrown. That was uh, in Dubai, right? Yeah, I or don't remember what match that was. I Someone was threw Brock. watermelon. It might have been at Brock. Mm-hmm. I remember. I could all just right. imagine all these like tomatoes and stuff. I don't know why. Who carries tomatoes with <laughs> who's them? <got> tomatoes? <laughs> who's, throw, who's throwing tomatoes? <laughs> Who just comes to a wrestling show with a ba- a sack of potatoes hey. and tomatoes? Hey. In hockey, they throw fish. They do throw fish. We learned and that. And bajongs. So. And what? Bajongs. What's a bajong? Dicks. <laughs> like, I was trying to be nice there. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again for the most electrifying segment in podcast history. Welcome to Name This Tag Team. Each week I present two random WWE superstars, and it's up to our amazing listeners to come up with creative and unforgettable names for the new tag team. Submit your suggestions on Discord, uh, on our Discord channel, Name This Team, and make sure to tune in on the next episode when we reveal the winning team name. So, Lauren, here are the top five tag team names I saw this uh this week you get to make the final call now there were a couple late submissions that i didn't get on the board there was a conversation that now if people just add the word balls to the end of a team <laughs> that you will select them i think Corey balls are nice and Corey kind. had a little bit of an argument that he submitted a name and then he was like maybe i'll just add balls to the end of it and that'll work so i think that people are finding out your uh your level of sense of humor here but uh, so last week's team mm-hmm. was Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin. Now, interesting enough, let's take okay. Baron Corbin's in NXT right now. Oh, is he really? And th- I was going to do a topic this week, but I'll probably do it next week about uh, Mustafa Corbinator. Ali and Baron Corbin are now both in NXT. Oh. And I love it. Oh, that's cool. I absolutely love Maybe it. Maybe I need to I watch again. I, I was going to tell you that I think we need to watch because I think it's a perfect opportunity for both those guys to uh, to rebuild not, not skills i don't think either one of them lacks skills let's be okay. clear that's why next week for sure next week this probably be the first topic is why it's not a demotion to go back let's to talk NXT. about it what did it what let's talk about it <laughs> oh my God. so this week's team is dolph ziggler baron corbin uh I, so some of these what i think what we're gonna Dolph have to do Ziggler and baron corbin i, I got some good ones in my head from now on uh-huh when people submit names i'm gonna ask them to submit the reason behind it to help you to because i don't backstory. yeah because i don't think okay i like that you don't have maybe i won't just knowledge. go for balls in yeah okay so first is the once upon a timers okay okay can you give me some backstory here? That I, you I assume that like once upon a timers means that they've kind of passed their time. Okay. They're once like upon they're a time. Timers. They were, okay. yeah. We have the job squad. Oh, because they're jobbers. Because they're both jobbers. <laughs> you got that one. This is fucking creative. Okay. Corbin 45 and two zigzags. Oh, shit. I think I like that one. <laughs> Corbin 45 and two zigzags. Uh, the Cuban jobbers. Are they both Cuban? Uh no. Okay. Is Dolph Ziggler clearly is not Cuban, so at one point I don't know why yeah, that I'm not even sure I understand that. I'm gonna have to get clarification on okay. that later on on what, what the Cuban jobbers meant. Okay. It sounded good to me, but now I'm looking at it and going, I don't know why I picked that. And then the last one is the temp agency. They're down for any job. <laughs> All right, so what are you eliminating? Okay, so first of all, there was no dicks this time. Damn. Uh, okay. I'm not sure that I will select ones that are just completely sexual in nature and, and have no context. Dolph Ziggler's dingle dangle. Um, I just thought of that. So um, 
So first of all, I'm going to take away the Cuban one right away because I have no idea what that is. That's right? why we need an explanation. From um, now on, starting next week, you give a name and then give me a, a two-sentence explanation of, of okay. what it is. Yeah. Then the other one we had was... You've got Once Upon a Timers. Okay. You've got The Job Squad. I like Corbin Ziggler, 45 so. and Two Zigzags and The Temp Agency. I like Dolph Ziggler, so I don't want to call him a Once Upon a Timer because in my mind, he's still a good man. Oh, okay. Okay, and I like so, Baron Corbin. So it leaves you with The Job Squad. Bye. Corbin 45 and Two Zigzags and The Temp Agency. Okay, I think this is like... A no-brainer. I'm going for the Corbin 45 and your pick, two that's, zigzags. That's your winner? Because that's an amazing song. All right. Corbin 45 and two zigzags was from the Witters. He's a, he's a returning champion. Greatest. He continues you to. You must know I think my he's knowledge. Getting inside, he's getting inside he's your inside head. head he's now. <laughs> inside my head now. Inside my head. All right. So this week's team. Now I'm going to say there was a, a video that came out on social media this week of our truth uh stealing money or something from mm -hmm. omas while now? he was asleep it looks like he's better it looks like he's getting better but i had picked this before i saw that video that video okay. just well that video just solidified this team to all me all right omas and our truth oh that might work i think it could work i think that the comedy it humanizes of him it what uh, humanizes yes it gives personality omas. it will give personality omas. to omas. uh to omas. omas okay so that leads us to Ten questions. I am your current champion. <laughs> I hate this part. I feel like it's a little bit of torture. You think so? Yes. Ten questions. All right. Start the, start the questions. Ten yes or no questions. Is it a female? Uh, no. Oh, fuck. Do they have blonde hair? No. Okay. Um. Do they have long hair? What is long hair? So, like, anything past here? No. They don't... don't wait. Mm. They do have long hair or they don't have long hair? Uh, let me... <sighs> uh, past what? Like, like you know, like, not don't like a buzz cut. Don't be cheating either. Like, anything that's not a buzz cut, pretty much. <sighs> anything that's not a buzz... I'd say this is long, yes. Okay. I may get shit on this one. Are... That's three. Are they under the age uh, of 40? Yes, that's four. Okay. Um, Let's see. Are they part of a faction or yes, a... Yes, that's five. Does this faction hold... Somebody in the faction hold a championship? No, that's... Yes, that's six. Okay. Um, I almost said no. Yes. Okay. Are they a heel? Yes, that's seven. Do they have a famous father? Yes, that's eight. Is he with mommy? Yes, that's nine. It's Dominic Mysterio. Oh. <laughs> I like Take that title. Heel. Visuals. So long hair. Mm-hmm. Yes. He has long hair. He's yes. got a mullet. Yeah. It's That's a mullet. literally the Party epitome of long and yeah. short hair. He's a little bit of both, but if, so if it's, it's not like buzzed. It's long cut, in the back, yeah. but it's buzzed on the sides. Yeah, but it's long. I struggled with that idea. Uh, on do, 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 do. I don't know how I got there, but I did. I, I thought you were going to wrong. Uh, yeah, when you said, do they have a champion? I thought, no, but Rhea's, Rhea's you. a damn champion. Greetis. Damn. I'm nice. going to have to step it up. Feels nice. I I'm gotta challenge quit, you. I gotta quit trying to take it easy on you in, in ten questions. I was set. I was set on one person. I was. I gonna, almost did Finn Balor until my spinner oh, landed yeah, on yeah. Finn Balor for the other thing. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed him. So you should be fine. All my right. little lip. Go ahead. That's all I got for you guys <laughs> this week. I, I feel you're really into the leprechaun thing because he looks like one to me, and I know that's really mean, but like I want to get him a pot of gold and stuff, and that hate me if you want to Pot i'm sorry <laughs> make sure to like and subscribe to the channel make sure to check out our discord to met, uh, meet other cool wrestling fans and make sure to check out the other content on our channel we also have the nerdy d show which has been fun we do things yeah. like what is the best kind of chicken wing mm -hmm. or would uh how Breakfast. i would how i would fight a kangaroo yes that, that was a and solid lot lizards one. 
Lot lizards came up the week stick before. Stick with me forever. Uh, but that's all we got. I am the notorious nerdy D. This is Level Up, Lauren, and you can ring the final bell. Ding 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 ding. Step in the ring if you ready. Let's go. Hey, hey. Casual wrestling community show. You already know. Talking WWE. Keep it rolling and hosted by notorious nerdy D. Hey. Dope show that you gon' find. Tune in cause it's online. Hit him with a figure four leg lock pile driver a clothesline. We bringing that heat like the show. But you should already know the casual wrestling community show. Let's go.